profiles and templates, but then they forget the way that you communicate all that analysis and your ideas to the market is with the order ticket. Okay. Now, just some just some basic information. Obviously, their symbol is here. If you want to create an order ticket for a specific symbol, just double click the symbol within the market watch window. So while I could do a new order ticket, that's one way of bringing up the ticket, I could also go to the market watch symbol and double click the actual symbol and bring up a ticket. So again, remember, if you want to change the symbol, you drag and drop. Okay, drag and drop. If you want a ticket for that symbol, you double click. Okay, all right, so keeping that in mind, there's my symbol. Uh, the volume is really flexible here, depending upon whether you have a, a mini or, or full-size account standard. Uh, one is whatever your account is set for. One would be in a mini account, one mini. One would be in a standard account, one standard. So basically 10,000 units for a mini, 100,000 units for a standard. Uh, one of the great things that you've got the access to is trading less than that single lot of whatever it is. Um, you can get go down to basically breaking it into tenths, okay, a tenth of a lot. And, and that's a really nice flexible thing for um, if you're brand new and you're just trading on a strategy, you don't want to risk a lot as you're just getting used to uh, the platform, whatever it may be, you have the flexibility to break it down to a smaller increment and thereby obviously reduce a certain degree of risk, right? You have the option at the time of entering your order, whether it be a pending or instant execution, to pre-select a stop loss and a take profit limit, a take profit order. So if you have your entire trading plan, as you should, uh, already you know, in your trading plan, uh, you can actually go ahead and communicate that to the ticket, and, and that stop loss order and the take profit order will, will go ahead and be entered into the market along with your entry order. Yes? Another neat feature is this comment. Let's say you're trying out a new strategy or you're, you're doing, for example, a swing trade versus a momentum trade or you're trying out a particular indicator. Maybe this particular trade is, is something you're testing during a post-economic release or before an economic release. Maybe there's something special about this trade. You can go ahead and put in whatever that comment is and Within the, within the, let's go down here, within the trade description, along with everything else that you'll see from type, size, symbol, price, if you did input a stop loss and take profit order, your execution price, you can actually right click in the white area and oh, you can actually right click in the white area and go to comments and add the comment column. Okay? So you'll notice the options you've got, you can actually add the comment column. So whatever you put in here will populate in this. So it gives you a note about what you were thinking or so forth. Use this, you know, because I've often equated the moments before a trade as the only sane time. So if there's, a, if there's something you want to remind yourself of about the trade, put it in the comments. Let me mention that you have to put the comment in at the time of entering the order. You cannot do it after. So make sure you put that comment in as you're setting up your, your ticket. Okay, instant execution, just like it, the second like implies. Pending orders. Well, this is when we start looking at limits and stops. And I know a lot of you might understand what limits and stops are from a definition standpoint, but actually making it happen in the market sometimes can be challenging. Um, probably the single most popular question I get after what my favorite time frame is, and by the way, I don't have one, and, and neither really should you. Um, the second most popular question I get is about order entry, okay, and about what limit and stop orders are. Really easy, easy to describe. A limit order is what's known as an or better order. You're asking to buy at a certain price or better. What does or better mean if you're buying? Well, if I want to buy something, I want to buy something for as low a price as possible. So give me the price I asked for or lower than that, I'm happy. What about a sell limit? It sells something at a price or better. What is or better if you're selling something? You're selling your car. I want to get as much for that 
car as I can. I want to sell it for as high a price as I can. So give me my sell price or higher. That's what that or better basically insinuates. You're setting a limit as to what you will expect, you, what you will you'll accept for the execution. Okay, I have to mention, let's, let's talk about the reality of executions though. If you think you're going to set a limit or put a stop in the market during an economic release, think again. You know, when, when you're thinking the same thing that everybody else on the planet's thinking, you know, order entry is like a game of musical chairs. Somebody's going to end up with their butt on the floor. Somebody's going to end up without a fill. It could happen when the market's going nuts. Okay, we know there's normal trading hour psychology, and then there's insane volatile market psychology. And again, I, I, I kind of liken it to musical chairs. So when the market's very volatile, and you know when these times typically are, they're right around economic reports. They're right about the time that you see a, a political figure on the television. You know, when that psychology is raised and the market gets volatile, that fast-moving condition, your stop-loss orders can basically become market orders and maybe filled at whatever the price is at the moment. And that price may be a whole lot different than what you had planned for. you got to remember that. Okay? What's the easiest thing to do? Well, number one, make sure you understand when different economic events are occurring. Either one, if you if your risk tolerance will not it will not basically uh, is not suitable for stop loss orders that can become market orders during these fast moving times, avoid it. Okay, you've got to know you, and if that's a risk that you cannot afford, emotionally or financially, avoid it. Okay, because that can happen in those volatile volatile times. Okay, but generally speaking, mechanically speaking. That limit is that or better order. I like to consider a stop order as basically a trigger. I'm telling the market, once you trade at a certain price, get me in right now. I think a kind of simple way to describe it would be a market order with a trigger, with a price trigger. It's going to lay dormant. It's going to wait. It's going to wait. It's going to wait. When a certain price trades, boom, it's going to go. And it's going to hit the market. By the way, same thing applies with stops. During those crazy times. You may not get what you plan for. But again, it's up to us to understand when the market is going to behave that way. And it's not that difficult to recognize. I keep a television in my, in my office on mute. I want to know when the president's in the Rose Garden about to, about to step up to the podium. I want to know when Geithner's going to be testifying or Bernanke's going to open his mouth. I want to keep an eye on my calendar. There's a great calendar at, at the website. I believe it's an econo day. Um, You've got the Dow Jones News scrolling right here on your platform. Those are things that are going to increase the volatility of the market because the psychology is on edge. That's when you've got to realize that your orders may not go necessarily to plan. And you've got to realize that, avoid it if you can't deal with it. Okay, be realistic. Be realistic. Think about that musical chairs analogy. Now, for those of you going, okay, Raggy, thanks for the mechanical definitions, but... I'm not even sure what I should be doing. I want to get in at a certain price. I don't, I don't know whether I should use a limit or a stop. Um, I'm not quite there yet. No problem. The platform's going to help you. I love this feature. Let's say we're looking at the cable right now. Now, this is not a setup, but I just want to show you an example. Let's say that I think the market will exhaust again at 1.6005, the 6,005 level. Okay? And I want to go ahead and play the fade or the exhaustion when prices get up there again. What will my order be? Now, some of you might already know really easily, okay, limit versus stop or whatever. Okay? But for those of you that don't, take your cursor, right-click that area, and you'll see the window pops up. And the first one in that window is trading. Go to the trading, and you'll notice you can bring up the ticket, which will give you access to an instant execution. Or notice the choices here. Well, I talked about exhaustion here around 6,005. Okay, it's not necessarily going to be right on the button. It might have popped up as 6,004, depending on how accurate I was with my cursor. But here you can see, do I want to buy at 6,005, or am I looking for exhaustion to sell at 6,005? If I talked about the market weakening and exhausting here, obviously I want to sell. So for those of you that aren't sure if you want to do a sell 
stop or a sell limit, right click, trading, and it tells me. And see, this time I was off by a couple pips. There's six 